Hi everyone! That's my participation. Okay, so this video is going to be a bit of a mishmash and all over the place of my trip to Germany and your staying here, basically. Which was just, I was working, so just daily life. However, I was a bit more motivated to take photos, so the amount of videos might be a little bit lacking, so you're going to be supplemented by photos. And he's a great photographer, so I think you'll actually enjoy that. Okay, so I went to visit my parents in Germany, and while I was there, it was my birthday, so for the first week, basically, I just spent time with family, filmed very little, did very little, we celebrated my birthday, and we hung out with the family and so on. But then the second week, we visited Dresden and then Prague just for a couple of days as proper tourists, taking nice photos, visiting all the sites and seeing Wearing all the Wearing shorts and sandals. Yeah, enjoying the summer weather. Hubby is visiting his family in Germany. So I'm here on my own today. New hair. And I'm sitting outside. This is day two since he's left. And I've just done the groceries and then I'm sitting in the garden sipping tea wondering whether I should do some garden work or if I have the motivation to do garden work and have all of my kitties here with me so I thought I would film them a little bit for you guys and we will do a weird little vlog um, transitioning between stuff I'm doing while I'm here and left on my lonesome and stuff that he's doing with his family all the way in Germany we have our little kip kip is it just me or is stuff looking very red? Definitely red, right? Up there is Lulu. And who else we got? We have Maya. And I could have sworn Momo was somewhere over here. <laughs> Momo. Sitting under his mama, where he belongs. Right there with her. As you can see, this is the end of winter in South Africa. So we still haven't had any rain. So everything is still very dry and very yellow at the moment. However, it's also super windy. And that is completely normal. They're the August winds. And it's basically the first sign that spring is coming. It was quite interesting to see how the cats react to one half of their family or of their humans not being there. Uh, Momo, for example, turned super clingy. Since Toby has left, Momo has been even more clingy than before. I literally can't go anywhere without him. And I sat down on the bed for five minutes and he is immediately just laying on me. And I also don't think I've peed alone in a week and a half. But that's fine. We love him anyways. Every time, every single time I went to the bathroom, he would come with me. My favorite bathroom buddy. God forbid the claw get, door gets closed. Hey, what's up? Do you not want to be alone, my boy? And if I dared to lock him out, he would have like a hissy fit about it outside the door. Um, but really like every time, like he could be fast asleep in the bed while I worked and I would just like whisk off quickly to go to the bathroom and next thing he'd be there and be like, oh, half asleep, like trotting after me going like, don't leave me. Um, so that was really, really sweet and really cute. And I felt really bad the few times I had to go out and had to leave him on, well, not really on his own. He has his siblings, his cat siblings. So yeah, I think the biggest difference was him and the other big difference was Ryu, who is my cat, theoretically, who didn't show up for two weeks. I mean, he did show up for meals, but he basically set himself up on a veranda behind me and he would come half an hour before breakfast and dinner time. He would show up in the house and he would wait for dinner time and then he would leave again. And ironically, as soon as he came back, now he's in the house again and he's hanging out on his desk and like being super social again. So clearly Ryu has decided that that's his dad. I don't exist. I'm just the food delivery system and that's all my purposes. We then headed off to Dresden.
It's a really old city that got hit really hard during the war. So the main attractions there are all the old buildings that they rebuilt using old stones and stuff that they basically retrieve after the war. If it looks like I'm all hot and sweaty, it's probably because I am. We've been running around Dresden all day. I think we've done, hold on, almost 15,000 steps. We've been to all the churches. We've been up the cathedrals, climbed, I don't know, a million steps by the feel of it. Really explored the city. It's an amazing city, an old city, rebuilt after the war. It looks amazing. It's really amazing what they managed to do after the war to rebuild some of these monuments after they were completely flattened after World War II. We're gonna go out one more time later this evening for dinner and a sundowner and then tomorrow we're leaving to Prague. It's a short drive, I think an hour and a half or so. Spending two more days there and then we're back home. And then on Friday is my flight home again. Don't forget to like the video and go ring my little bell down there, please. It really helps us out. Oh, and maybe subscribe if you haven't yet. One of the major attractions is the Church of the Lady or the Frauenkirche in German, which was completely destroyed after the war. And it's really amazing to see how they rebuilt the entire thing. And it's just a generally really beautiful city. Like the nightlife, it's amazing, especially in summer when it's nice and warm and you can walk around the city. It's just phenomenal. It's also a very different vibe. I mean, I grew up in Europe. And from what he then sent me, the photos he sent me and, and so on, I just, I think that's one of the main things I miss about, about Europe is in, in German it's called a Fußgängerzone. It's basically like little yeah, pedestrian, like right? pedestrian areas, um, generally in the center of town, especially in the old towns. And it's basically these really old buildings and you have lots of little restaurants and little cafes and there's there are no cars and it's all very open you can sit outside when the weather watch allows the people and so on and you can yeah do people watching and so on and in south africa we don't really get that because of security and the way the country yeah, works it's just a much more it's a much younger city mm. so we don't really have that and just seeing the photos he sent me when he was at at dinner and so on in the restaurants and i was like oh that is a part of Europe I really, really miss. Mm. The one thing that happened while he was gone is I noticed, I thought I noticed that Maya had lost some weight and obviously it didn't happen from one day to another. So I, it was something I'd kind of kept an eye on for, for a couple of weeks. And I decided while he was gone that no, I really was a little worried about it. So I took her to the vet. So we're in the car with this little baby because of course, as soon as the hubby is gone, we are, well, I'm seeing issues. I think she's losing a little bit of weight and because she's older and she has some pre-existing conditions, I'm just going to bring her in for a quick checkup to make sure that everything's all right and it's just age and nothing more serious. Just to have a checkup done and to be safe because she isn't, I mean, our three eldest are now 14, 13 and 12, Maya being the middle child, so 13, which counts as a senior cat. It's not super old, but it is, an age frame where you can start having issues with kidneys, diabetes and so on. So I thought rather safe than sorry. She had lost some weight since the last time she was in, um, but the vet wasn't too worried. She was looking good. He obviously did a checkup with temperature and just felt um, her organs and had a look at her eyes, mouth and so on. And then we just for safety also did a blood panel um, to make sure that the kidneys are fine and that um, everything is a-okay. So we are back home. As you can see, Maya has a shaved neck. Hey, sweetie. And is very grumpy now. So they drew some blood and I'm just waiting for the phone call to get the results. We're just checking that the kidneys are fine and that there's no diabetes. Um, she has lost weight, but the vet is quite happy with her general shape and how she's looking he says he doesn't she doesn't look unhealthy so it might just be that in her older age she is starting to lose weight and we'll just have to keep an eye on it basically i just got the call from the vet um 
regarding Maya's blood tests and I'm happy to say that the bloods are clean, everything looks good. He said all the levels are actually really really good for a cat her age and he's not worried at all. So basically she's probably just losing a little bit of weight and muscle mass due to her age. And so we are going to up her food a little bit. Um, but he did warn not to give her too much either because um, basically the body naturally with age doesn't process protein the same way anymore and if you start overfeeding protein then the kidneys can actually shut down from that so he said just be cautious but you can up a little bit just to to help her out and so that's what we're gonna do and i just wanted to add that i had the most wonderful conversation with him about um, raw food because obviously talking kidneys um, diet was a big uh, thing we talked about and I told him straight that we do feed raw and I would prefer to keep feeding raw unless medically he can prove to me that putting her on a different option would be better for her and um, I was ready to fight my case and everything and he was so accepting he said listen that's not a problem if it is the kidneys and she's on a raw diet there's um, special medicines we can give her that will help her process um, her food better and basically help her draw what she needs from the raw diet. And he was so accepting and he was so cool about it, which is great because you can and hear a lot of stories as a raw feeder of vets that are obviously sponsored by kibble and um, kibble brands and they're very anti-raw. And so he was super cool about it and immediately switched tactics and was like, okay, then this is what we can do if it is the kidneys. This is just what, how we'll approach it so that you can keep feeding what you want and um, that he has no issues with us feeding raw. And he said, if it works for you and your cats are healthy and doing great on it, then that's all that he needs to know. So yeah, we're gonna up Maya's dosage a little bit and we're gonna keep an eye on her. Um, but basically she's a healthy cat. She's just a senior cat. And there's not much we can do except keep her comfortable, keep her happy, and just make sure she's healthy. Unfortunately, it's just age and there isn't that much we can do about it. Um, if you have any experience with aging cats and how to help them gain weight safely, you're more than welcome to pop us a message down below. And any help would be appreciated. While that was happening, we traveled to Prague, which is about an hour and a half's drive from Dresden. So I was first a little bit skeptical about Prague because it's in a different country completely and we don't speak the language and so on, but because it's so international and stuff, it's you really, you speak English anywhere, people will understand you. You speak German anywhere, most of the time someone will understand you. So it's actually such an amazing, diverse city and it's so beautiful because it's also so old and it's got all this history. It's just stunning. And we stayed in this old, old hotel in the middle of town. We walked everywhere. It was just such a phenomenal experience. The food was amazing. The the old landscapes and stuff were just amazing. It, I hi highly recommend anyone, if you have the opportunity, go see Prague. It's, it's really beautiful. Well, we went for a walk one evening and it was one of those moments as a photographer where in South Africa I don't get opportunities like this because half the time you're a bit skeptical about standing on the side of the road with your camera. But here I just set up my camera and took some nice photos. Not a worry in the world. My dad was sitting at a little restaurant having a drink, you know, also watching the scenery and it was just so amazing. Being able to do that is, you know, for someone from South Africa is just amazing. And then you came home. And then I came home. <laughs> Quite a long trip as well. <laughs> also in the morning, like landing at seven o'clock and the airport is outside of Johannesburg, well, on the edge of Johannesburg, so. Guess who got to get up at six o'clock on a Saturday morning? Actually, half past five. Too fetch. Well, maybe, maybe next time, Madam over here will come with us, and we'll make a bit of a better vlog video type of thing. I was just not really motivated on my own, and was more inspired to take photos. And I'm not all that comfortable filming in public on my own yet, so. Maybe next time Which if we go together. I do yeah. With a little camera. I just film random stuff and then he gets to throw it all together. I also filmed random stuff, but like talking on camera in public yeah. is a bit. I have no problems. No. 
if you have any recommendations of which places in Europe you think are really unique and we should see, um, drop a comment. We're kind of hoping to go see Paris next year. Mm. So maybe if you know some secret... Look, I like seeing the, the, the not-so-typical touristy stuff. I hate super crowded places, so I'd rather go somewhere that's a little bit less crowded if it's unique and interesting. So if you have any like little restaurants or hidden gems in Paris, because that will probably be the next location we go to, then let us know, and then we'll put it on the list of places we want to go. And I speak French, so it's not a... We'll definitely be quite comfortable just being over there. And yeah. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Au revoir. <laughs> Technically, you should say Auf Wiedersehen because you were in Germany. Au revoir will be for the next one. We're just talking about Paris. <laughs> <laughs>